Let's go to Podcast Cringe. He's got a new video about Two Bears, One Cave. I want to see this, actually, because they came back recently, right? So I want to see. Maybe this is a roundup of what happened, but I want to see what the vibe is. What's happening on Two Bears, One Cave? Is Does Tom still hurt Bert? Is Bert still in denial about, about it being an alcoholic? What is the deal? Big up my guy, Podcast Cringe. Let's see what he's saying. Du, 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 du. Come on, bro. Oh, why is it always on mute again? I don't know what's happening here. Why is it always on mute? Okay, cool. It's loading now. <laughs> Two birds, one rib is hilarious. Ultimate betrayal. No, it's understandable. One thing to shadow does. Uh, I told him that, so you're not <laughs> Hold on, Ucho, was that? Ucho's saying he's trying to filter out his fan base that doesn't really fuck with comedy, only his looks. Yeah, I like that. That's a good, uh, that's a good perspective to come from. I like that. I think that's what I said before. Yeah, this kind of relates a little bit. Again, I'll keep fucking mentioning it because I think there's some correlations to it, but it probably isn't. But I think there's a lot of correlations between like stand-up and DJing in terms of just a bit, if it being like an individual thing that you do on stage, blah, blah, whatever. I was saying one time, I think actually to a friend I was talking to, I think, about it. Um, a, D a DJ, right? This girl that I know. And I was basically telling her that she shouldn't feel bad if she has to lean into her looks to get gigs, right? If you have to put some pictures up on your Instagram or you have to record a video in a certain angle, don't feel bad um, about showing off your assets in order for you to get some traction online. But then I said to her, be very mindful though, the way you come into the game, people are gonna treat you a certain way depending how you come into the game, right? So you have to decide along the journey to make a decision which which way you go what you have you reach a fork in the road do you continue being the sexy dj or do you purposely cover up and focus on the music and then get people to look at you that way but it's i mean it's a hard decision to make because sometimes going the sexy route um could be very lucrative and make you lose of money but then it's not going to give you any sort of kudos points with your peers and stuff, right? You're not going to feel respected as an artist or whatever, right? And I think maybe Matt Rife maybe feels the same. Maybe he feels like his other comedian pals and stuff don't respect him enough because he just sells tickets and he's good looking. So maybe he now wants to get the respect of his comedic peers by purposely pissing off his fans, maybe having a few tours not sell well, but then be respected because, oh, okay, he's bringing it. He's really going hard and shit. But I think it's a dumb move because I think those guys, you know, I think those guys would kill to be Matt Rife. So it kind of reminds me of like, you remember when you were in school and your friends, I don't know, maybe a girl will be into you and your friends will try to convince you that she's ugly, but she's not really. It's just that they're jealous that she's into you. It's that sort of vibe. Like I think Matt should be, he should be wary about listening to these comedians, man, because a lot of them are full of shit. Like, I don't know. Um, what? You people saying that? Yeah, AZ, what ADHD side quest are we going on? <laughs> ADHD side quest, bro. Come on, man. Have some respect for my mental health, man. What's going on, man? Mental health awareness week, isn't it? Or something, right? I think so. I don't know. But come on, man. Have some respect for my mental health. A friend. <laughs> Yeah, happy Thanksgiving to the stream chat as well. If you're in America and stuff and you celebrate happy Thanksgiving or you celebrate fucking, Jesus Christ. If you celebrate Thanksgiving or happy Thanksgiving and you live in, what is it? Um, Brazil, Granada, St. Lucia, wherever Canada and America, make sure that you have a good one. Happy Thanksgiving to the fucking stream chat. Happy fucking Thanksgiving. You're not my boy. Yeah. We don't text about <laughs> yeah. Thanksgiving happy. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me to slow down. Don't tell me you're worried about me. He's wearing a Moncler woolly hat now, right? Nice. If you want to enjoy dinner with me tonight, shut your mouth mm -hmm. and order a god drink. Mm -hmm. He wasn't the only person I told that to. <laughs> so Two Bears and Heaps of Cringe is back in its original form with the two bears being in the same cave at the same time. There's been months of speculation about whether or not we'd see Tom and Bert back together again. Rumors have been circling in the YouTube commentary community that these two Muppets were done, and some even speculated that they weren't even talking. But all of those rumors have been put to bed after the latest episode featured them both, and it was almost like they'd never left each other. So there's a lot to cover from this episode, and as usual, I'm gonna take you through all the best and cringiest bits, 
However, I actually want to start with the comment section because... Uh, big up, Sarlux. Yeah, yeah, I'll try, man. I'll try and stream tomorrow as well. I'll try. I'll try my best. It's getting to the point where it's getting harder and harder to find positive messages of support from viewers of this podcast. So let's take a quick look at some of the top comments. Wow, we're so blessed to have the actual hosts of the show hosting the show. <laughs> Six minutes in and Bert has already said, I'm in great shape. Oh. You can tell what episodes have Bert on them because there's like 50 timestamps for different subjects every three minutes. Jesus Christ. Bert needs to talk about himself more. Tom nearly answered a question there for a second. Never thought I'd ever hear Bert utter the words, I bit off more than I could chew. And then there were the comments about them banking episodes months in advance. It seems like everyone's in on this banking episode thing they have going. Can't wait to hear what these two were doing two months ago. <laughs> I'm just waiting for them to go, did you hear about the paragliders <laughs> in Israel the other day? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> waiting for them to talk about the Halloween party they attended <laughs> yesterday. So ironically, this episode was actually recorded last week. It wasn't one of their banked episodes. Oh, wow. So it seems like we've caught up and we're out of the banked episode loop, for now at least. But just scrolling through the comment section while I was listening to this episode, and it's seriously getting harder and harder to find positive comments, there must be a large portion of their viewers who are hate watching their show, and it made me wonder how aware they are about all the hate that they're getting nowadays. I mean, surely Bird and Tom know how much their popularity has fallen off. They're obviously still selling tickets to their shows and people are still watching their specials, but there seems to be a divide in their fan bases where they have their comedy fans who love their stand-up. You have to really love Bert to see him perform, innit? You have to really love him to see him perform. Like, just drunk dad vibes. Drunk uncle vibes, just on stage, like... Like, you know, trying to relive his fucking glory years in college and shit. It's kind of sad, to be fair, if you think about it. Your whole personality being centered around drinking booze and being fun at parties. Couldn't be me, man, honestly. Up, And then their YouTube viewers who are slowly turning against them, it seems. <laughs> And I also thought it was interesting that Tom has seemed to back down from his airport controversy where he absolutely roasted a TSA agent on Twitter after she made him check his bag a couple of months back. He only mentioned it in passing on the pre-recorded Halloween episode of YMH with Christina and Jimmy Carr, but I think it's strange that he hasn't continued to lean into it more seeing as he really went to town on American Airlines on Twitter that day. It just seems odd that he wouldn't keep pushing it and discuss it with Bert on their first podcast back together after such a long break. I think that's a sign that maybe Tom's listening and realizing that he's dug himself a pretty big hole and it's time to ease off and rebuild his reputation. I could be wrong, you never know. He might bring it up as some segment soon. But even in this episode, when Bert referenced the rise in hatred towards Tom for being unrelatable, he just laughed it off and he didn't take the bait like he usually does and he just kept his mouth shut on this occasion. And I will tell you, you know, a lot of the fans say that you're totally unrelatable now, but uh, <laughs> I understand why you became unrelatable. Yeah. It feels really cool to buy a nice something nice. <laughs> like it fits your body. Oh, as opposed to just like as opposed a to bed sheet? As opposed yeah. to a bed sheet. Like as soon as you have your body fits in things, you're like, oh, I wouldn't mind getting a nice. God, I love this jacket. thing in my mouth. Know, getting a nice jacket. I have no jackets. All my jackets look huge on me. I don't have a suit. So if you've been living under a rock and you haven't heard Bert talk about this constantly for the last three months, Bert stopped drinking for over 80 days to give his body a well-needed break. And he says he lost 40 pounds. Wow, incredible. He feels like I a completely new man. Press, and in Press X for doubt on that one. I don't believe that. True Bert Kreischer fashion, he dedicated a significant portion of the first half of this podcast to point out the absolutely bleeding obvious, that getting healthy makes you feel better. I mean, who knew? And it made me think, Bert's obvious revelations are like the equivalent of an Andrew Schultz epiphany. You don't realize how deep you are in like obesity and drinking and keeping, how deep you are in the hole right. until you get your head a little bit out of it and then yeah. you start feeling better and like little things are feeling a lot better for me. And also when you like just look at a three month old wow. photo, you're like, what the right like i mean when i look at photo of myself even from a year a year and a half ago i'm like yeah i was like i'm like i was 
fully delusional. Oh, Tom, you still are, buddy. But if we needed a bird in therapy reflection story to fully capture the journey that he's been on for the last few months, he handed it to us right here by telling the story of how he snapped at Tom's agent last year and then subsequently apologized during his recent health binge. You know, now that he's got a clear and sharp mind and he can think straight. Well, I apologized to your agent. Did he tell you that? Yeah, he was really yeah. touched by it. Well, I, he, I, we were at the some party in LA and I... He came up to me and I was like, I was like, hey man, I owe you an apology. Cause he came up to me right at the very beginning of my downward spiral. And I say downward spiral in the funnest way. Well, we have way. to set up the context. Whoa. So what happened was we were both in New York. We have to be both in New York on the same night. And we met up for dinner with yes. a group. We went out with a whole group of people. It was right. I mean, it was like, it was, it was. Only a Hollywood agent would let someone like Bert snap at them. And like, yeah, agents had to put up with a lot. Imagine letting Bert fucking snap on you. Like, no way. Right when I started putting on weight. Yeah. And right when I was, right when I started the, the Sorry, beginning, I know exactly when it was. It was March of 22. I just had bit off way more than I could chew in everything. Mm -hmm. I had a special that I had to shoot. I had a special I had to promote. I had a movie I had to promote. I had, a, I had a, an arena tour in the in North America. I had one in Australia, one in, in, in Europe. I mean, I just was like, I bit off. I had fully loaded. I yeah. had a cruise. I had Red Rocks. And I was just... I this nigga hates his family, isn't it? He fucking hates his family. But I would not listen to you. If you told me slow down, yeah. I'd tell you, get the f out of my way. At dinner, one of the, I guess one of the first things he told you. Very he, casually, he goes, yeah. I'm worried about you. Yeah, I'm worried about you. You need to kind of take it easy. And you're like, who the f are you? Are you my wife or something? Jesus Christ. I told him, I said, you're not my f Imagine, oh. friend, you're not my boy. Yeah. We don't text about p Yeah. Don't tell me to slow down don't tell me you're worried about me Jesus if you want Christ. to enjoy dinner with me tonight shut your mouth mm -hmm. and order a guy drink uh -huh. imagine letting him say that to you imagine letting bert say to you if you want to enjoy your dinner tonight shut up and order a drink <laughs> imagine letting this fucking rotund red cheek alcoholic mess tell you that never and honestly fame can do some crazy things to people man it can make them put up with a lot of shit fame is a weird thing bro because that level of disrespect is so unnecessary according to him the guy said it in a really joking way kind of sincere but he didn't even say it in a mean way and he, and he answers him like that you could have just ignored him or something or glared at him but he gave him a proper dressing down for nothing he wasn't the only person I told that to. <laughs> you didn't tell us Joe Rogan, did you? You fucking spanner. You know, I'm actually going to go against the grain here because I kind of agree with Bert. Who is Tom's agent to tell Bert that he's worried about him and he should try to take it easy? I mean, it's not Bert's agent and it's not a family member. It's not a close friend. Hell, it's not even Papa Rogan. That's a weird thing to say to someone who you only really know in a professional capacity. And even though I obviously agree that Bert's been out of control for quite a while, and he still is, it was poor form for Tom's agent to try to intervene in Bert's life like that and set him straight. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Anyway, Bert's health and positivity tour went on for a while in this episode, and it was fascinating to look into a man transformed by his experience. Um, Alexander M Martin Spanner is basically idiot. Is basically idiot, essentially. It's more ruder than that, but I don't want to say the word, but it's basically idiot. <laughs> and become wiser for having gone through his 80-day period of recovery. But I was just gotten so bloated that Georgia and Isla and Leanne all said something to me, and they're yeah. like, and my sister said, I want to put a pin in your neck and deflate you. I say this understanding what the internet sounds like, meaning like what people say. Yeah. People, because people lie to themselves on the internet all of the time. Course, of and, course. And, and I mean, that's what the internet's made up of. I'm starting to really appreciate the people that tell the truth, that, which are very few and far between. I Fucking hell, bro. 50 years old with two kids, and you're starting to understand the fucking concept of telling the truth. Some people's success is very. I wouldn't want to say undeserving, but some people just get lucky in life, in it. Really do get lucky because he's an absolute redact, in it, in a ways. It's like, how are you even still alive? <laughs>
I was in great shape. I was working out. Well, I didn't have a heart attack. You were A shape. You I was A shape. But yeah. I was benching 225 yeah, no, you were, 10 yeah. times. Yeah. I was strong. Right. I was strong. I just was completely. And I did that cleanse, went to my cardiologist, and and talked to Rogan. And I literally, I've been carnal. Fucking talking to Rogan, man. Fucking hell. He's out there, dad, isn't it? Don't you have fucking Google? Don't you have YouTube? Do you have to talk to Rogan about fucking how to exercise or what to eat? Like, come on, bro. For, for, and do not listen to me. I don't have any answers. I'm not, right. I don't know anything. No one here is saying follow Bert's lead on I'm anything. Trying to get into ever. sins. So that's it, folks. Bert's finally off the drink. He's healthy. He's happy. And he's <laughs> on track to reversing years of abuse on I his love body. He's finally decided to act his I age and do away cringe. with the partying ways of his youth. <laughs> right? I'm very proud that you d took such good to care of yourself. I think you look great. I, I love feel podcast. great. Yeah. I feel great. I will say, I will say, uh, I drank on the cruise. I drank in the Cayman Islands. Uh, I drank like three nights ago, four nights ago. Big up, Sidelux. Appreciate you. Thank you, brother. Happy Nicaragua Thanksgiving. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> happy Nicaragua. I love that. I love what you did there, Sidelux. That's a double entendre, right? Happy Nicaragua, Nicaragua. I see what you did there. Right? I know. I know. I know. <laughs> nights ago we went to a, a thing for out of school i drank there like i don't have a problem drinking i like drinking a lot yeah. i'll drink with you tomorrow night okay um the one we thing i will tell there. you the one thing i'm so you so you've been drinking all this time then how how, you, how have you been how have you been carnival diet telling you is that especially if you're like a big partier who looks at me and goes oh is he good drinking i'm not i uh, look that's never gonna happen here's the thing i i i, I had said jesus christ bro to myself in a speech a long time ago i'll always stay healthy enough to keep drinking oh i had not let that happen that's some addict addict mind isn't it he gave himself a speech that he's going to stay healthy enough to keep on drinking let me rewind that again what, what kind of speech is that off in a speech a long time ago i'll always stay healthy enough to keep drinking oh i had not let that happen I'll always stay healthy enough to keep drinking. So he'll do just enough to make sure he doesn't die just so he can continue drinking. Is booze really that tasty? The first sip is usually the best, right? The first pint, the first crack open of a fucking bottle of beer is usually the best. The first sip of a whiskey is usually quite good. After that, it kind of goes downhill after, isn't it? It's not really that great. Like, and the funny thing about him is, well, like, I actually party, like, I party, I go to actually, I actually go to parties and raves, where you've got the distraction of somebody DJing, you can dance, you can talk to randoms, go to the smoking area, hang out outside, like, you've got all these little things you can do, it kind of feels like an adult, um, it feels like an adult daycare, but he just drinks at home, he does not, uh, do you know what I mean, like, I'd understand it if he actually went to raves, like he was in the booth with fucking, what's his name, um, with Diplo or something, right? He went to Las Vegas and shit. He doesn't actually party like that. He just goes to like, what, bars after he finishes doing stand-up and talks to fans and sits around and talks about, because I'm pretty sure he probably speaks about the same thing. So he's not going to be a good hang. He's going to talk about comedy and who makes money and who sells tickets you might gossip about somebody's marriage and shit. Like, it'll be boring conversation. It's not even like he's a fun hang. So it's like, you're drinking and fucking up your body for what? Nothing, really. It sounds like. I got into a place where I was in a hole. So, but now I feel I'm, I'm way healthy enough to keep drinking. So, uh, so yeah, we'll drink tomorrow night I love at dinner. this guy. Okay. Oh, classic Bert, huh? He's such a party boy. Oh, you can see it again here, innit? Whatever that thing is, you can see it there too. That Bert, can I just ask the most obvious question in the world in everyone's head right now? On what planet does he think he's going to be able to drink in moderation going forward? I mean, how long does he think that's going to last? This is going to age like milk. Anyway, we move on from one delusion milk. to another. Now we're finished with Bert's health therapy session where Tom just sits there and laughs at his supposed best friend. 
clearly enabling him instead of helping him, but now we move on to Bert's delusions of comedic grandeur, where he starts fishing for awards. I'm going to say this. Now, I, you can edit this out if you want, Yeah. but I'm going to say this. I was just talking to Ryan about this. Yeah. I was just talking to Ryan about this. So I got nominated for the top comedy tour of the year. Okay. Congratulations. Pull, thank you. Pull it up. But here's what I'll say. There you go. Who the fuck? No, who, what kind of prize is this? Oh, there you go. Me, Adam Sandler, Dave Chappelle, Kevin Hart, Matt Reif, and Nate Bargatze. Now, Polestar, I want you to hear this. Okay. Okay. Those guys will not appreciate this award. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, we're doing this. Okay. Yeah, I will. Okay? okay. You can give the award to Adam Sandler. Do you think that's getting on the mantle? Probably not. Do you think he'll ever walk into his office and go, F man, I forgot about the I Missed You tour. That was a fun run. Do you think Dave Chappelle, the greatest living comic of our generation, arguably other than Kevin Hart, or soon to be Matt Reif, or right now, Nate Bargatze is the biggest selling comedian in the world. Like he's Killing selling it. crazy it. numbers. Yeah. Do you think they're going to care? Do you so he's begging for an award because he's the only one that will actually, what, make a video about it and talk about his podcast and shit. Like, what is this, bro? Do you think when they get that award, they're going to cry? Do you think they're going to cry and they're going to they're gonna make a video and post a video talking about how Polestar is the greatest publication in the world. When it comes to touring, they really do dial in so he's gonna what us touring comics and touring musicians care about and what the buyers care about and what the ad people care about. We do. Polestar is an amazing publication. I would be shocked if Matt Rife knows. I love Matt Rife. I'd be shocked if he knows what Polestar is. I'd be shocked if he knew he was nominated. So if you give me that award, this is my ploy to Polestar. Okay. If you give me that award, You'll get what the universe wants you to get. Wow. That's how I look at things. That was quite a plea for winning that. That's a, that's a good pitch. Yeah. Okay, okay. Are you guys ready for the most whack analogy you've ever heard? All right. Bert Kreischer is the Russell Westbrook of the comedy world. He's trying to stat pad his way to success and build a legacy off the back of winning fake awards. And that's an <laughs> insult to Russell Westbrook, who actually has had some sparks of brilliance throughout his career. But it gets worse. Now, let me just say, whoever thought it was a good idea to include comedy specials at the Golden Globe Awards, they should be sacked immediately. It was bad enough with just actors, but now we're going to have to put up with the Brogan comedy brats farming for votes from the Hollywood foreign press. So I'm calling it now. This is going to be an absolute disaster. Golden Globes are coming up. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we're both getting nominated for our specials. Sledgehammer. They're the submitted. submitted. Submitted, submitted, yeah, submitted. Yeah. Yeah. Golden Globes are coming up. This is the first year comics have ever been Everett, invited to the Golden true. Globes. Yep. Sledgehammer is by far probably, if not the second biggest special on the platform, the third. It's 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 goes it goes uh Chris Rock, John Mulaney, and you and John Mulaney are neck and neck, I'm sure. You biggest. too, man. My special was big, but I mean it's not Mulaney and it's not you. I don't think so. No. Fuck you no. You have to be a real fan of these guys to care about this shit, innit? Comedians talking about award, like, so now it's going to be awards thing. It's going to be the new thing. Not selling tickets. It's going to be the new metric of success is like, how many Golden Globes have you got? For specials that don't matter, no one sees. And also for the awards, you're probably going to get off the back of fucking Netflix. Because I'm assuming, like most award shows, there's a lot of payola involved. Netflix are going to want to have a good presence there, right? They wanna gonna, they, they're going to want to get nominated. They want their stuff to fucking get seen. So it's going to be good for business if a few of their comedians get nominated and also win. Fucking hell, man. No, but it, it was big. But I will say this. I will say this. And God damn it, I love these things, Tommy. I feel the energy, the juice that God wanted you to have when you were born. I feel it. It's in my mouth and it's coursing through my brain. Yeah. And, it's, and it's, I'm flowing quicker. Yeah. Here's the deal. Not to say John Mulaney doesn't care about a Golden Globe. Right. But Tom Segura does. No, I do. I think it would be amazing. It would be amazing. You get a nice suit. It would be amazing to be nominated. All right, That's let's true. Hear, let's, hear, uh, let's hear accepting speech. Okay, we're all used to actors going on publicity campaigns months out from the award season, but this really takes the cake. It's so obvious that this was Bert's idea in the team meeting they had before they started recording the podcast and everybody was against it, but Bert chucked a tantrum and started crying until everybody agreed to do it. And you guys know I don't usually do this unless mm. it's absolutely necessary. 
but I'm going to have to give you guys a cringe warning right now. This is going to get bad, folks, so don't say I didn't warn you. And finally, while you're watching this, I want you to really think to yourselves, are these guys really acting or are they actually being serious? Do me now. Okay. And watch it. Okay. And okay. Watch. And, hey, Golden Globes, foreign press. I want you to watch the thunder I'll bring okay. to this year's Golden Globes. All right. Okay. And the nominees for the best comedy special of the year. Right. And the winner is, oh my God. This is so cool, man. My friend, Burt Kreischer, Razzle Dazzle. <laughs> I, I want to take this minute. I just want to take one minute. Don't play the music. Don't play the music. I want to thank my best friend, Tom Segura. I was at the lowest I've ever been five years ago. I was stepping on the treadmill. I was overweight. Tom was fat shaming me. We were redoing our house. I had Leanne wanted me to get a vasectomy. And I said, this is where I am in the business. And he said, buddy, we can get you to where you need to be together. Together. We'll focus on your podcast. Focus on your stand up. And we did Rogan. Shout out to Joe Rogan. And I, and I could really sell it. Yeah, if you yeah. put me up there, I'll really sell and it. Really and I'll cry. Yeah. I will cry. I feel so bad for his, his daughters, man. Imagine just being a dad. Just this non-stop attention horror machine. Just this attention vacuum. It must be so exhausting. Fucking hell. Cry. Yeah. Real tears, real tears. I think the Joe thing is a nice touch too because it kind of sticks them. It sticks it to yeah. them. Could you guys actually imagine if Bert won a Golden Globe? No, no, it's like seriously, just think about it. We would never hear the end of it. If Tom won, I think he'd put on his JRE humble Tom persona and try to act the part and all that. But old Bertie boy, yeah, he'd probably get a tattoo of a Golden Globe on his belly or something. He would forever demand to be known as Bert Golden Globe Crusher. So here's my plea to the Hollywood foreign press. Exactly. I know you all hate Dave Chappelle and Louis C.K., so I understand if you don't want to give it to them, but for the love of God, do not let it be Burt Kreischer. Please. Give it to Matt Rife if you please, have to. Please. You know you love his cute little face and his tough Disney guy attitude. Do us all a favor and vote no for Burt Kreischer. Imagine if Burt wins, man. We will not hear the end of that shit. Fucking hell. I also love how he doesn't mention his movie. That's funny. And speaking of Matt Rife, because Bert and Tom have been off doing their own thing for a few months, Tom had the pleasure of interviewing Matt Rife on his own, which I covered in a video titled, Tom Segura is Jealous of Matt Rife. So you can go and check that out if you're interested. But because Bert didn't get in on that action, he had to remind everyone, as usual, that he was there when Rife hadn't blown up yet. You see, Bert has this habit of knowing things before they happen, I recently covered how Bert always knew Shane Gillis was going to blow yeah, up exactly. and how he nursed his career and helped him climb the rungs on the comedy brain ladder. Mm. And so these two middle-aged buffoons had a tough time reconciling Matt Rife's newfound success with their own. Matt Rife. How was Matt Rife? I, didn't, well, I haven't listened to that one yet. It was great. Everybody probably dreams of having what happened to him. And I don't think it's a thing that most people can handle. And what I mean is that yeah. His whole life completely changed dramatically in a 12 month period. One year prior to when he sat down there, he was like, I was clearing like $300 for a gig. He was doing my podcast. And, <laughs> and he. One uh, year before, I mean, I'm being saying this with love. Yeah. I, a year before, a year and a half before, I had Matt Rife on the podcast. Yeah. And it maybe got like 15,000 views on yeah. YouTube. On YouTube, and the yeah. downloads are different, but like on YouTube, that's the test of like if it's gonna, you know. And I was like, I was like, God, it was a good interview too. We talked about so it. audio isn't king. So audio isn't king. Hmm. His dad, and we talked about Ralphie. And we talked. We, it was a great interview. Yeah. And then he popped, and all of a sudden, it's at like seven. Million. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Z. I wouldn't even call it catty. It's like 
I won't even call it catty. It's just very transparent. They're only his friend because he sells so many tickets. Like, that's why I said to you guys, like, I know you guys don't like him as a comedian, but you have to give the kid credit. He doesn't come from the Joe Rogan school of fucking promotion and clout chasing. He's never done that. He's did it, quote unquote, on his, on his own. So for these guys, it's really, un, it's really like, it must make no sense because in their heads, the only way that they think about becoming successful is by spamming the feed with loads of crowd work clips, going on Rogan as much as possible and doing podcast tours. That's the only way that they know to fucking get an, their name out there, right? Hoping a video goes viral, going on Rogan, do podcast tours. Matt Reif didn't do any of those things. Or yeah, he did the viral clips, but he didn't go on Rogan. He didn't really do a podcast tour. He kind of kept it within his friends and stuff, but he made it literally on his own. So for these guys, he's essentially an alien. Like, that's why. So I don't think it's even catty. I think it's more so they're kind of like, in awe of him a little bit but they're also only his friend or they're only only sucking up to him because he's undeniably successful you know they can't deny it there is not a fluke do you know what I mean he's obviously successful because he's built it from the ground up it's obviously helps the way he looks and stuff whatever but still he's got an actual fan base so they can't deny it anymore that's why they're basically trying to all lick his ass but I, the only thing I don't like and this is something that I think is a bit disgusting but I think it happens a lot in show, show business they're trying to position themselves as his kind of OG, you know? Like Tom's already taking that mentorship role with him. Bert's trying to remind everybody that he saw him first. They're all trying to position themselves. It's not enough that they're trying to just stand next to him and get a picture. They all want to be a part of the journey, you know? That's the bit that's a bit gross. It's a bit like, yuck. You know what I mean? Like, leave the, leave the guy alone, man. Like, give him some advice and stuff, but you don't need to, like, shoehorn yourself into his life and become his fucking surrogate dad or some shit. It's like, allow it. Yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, the thing is that, like, like I said, it's, it's, everyone thinks, you know, when you're in your 20s, you're like, I want to, I want, I want to be a superstar. I want all this to happen. But it is a lot. To oh, yeah. What happened to that, actually? Um, what's it? Match, uh, Matchy. You're right, innit? Yeah. What happened to Sober October this year? Did they, did anybody know? What What did Rogan say? Or did they just skip it this year? What happened to Sub October? Do you remember when that was actually fun? I actually went, I actually went, Um, I actually did it properly the first two times they actually did it. I remember the first time I did it, I actually happened to go to work. Um, No, I, had, I went to Berlin for work that same October they did it. It was brutal, boy. I went to fucking Berghain completely sober, went to clubs. So it was brutal, but it's actually really good. To be fair, it kind of, you know, was a good way to kind of quickly find out that I'm not an alcoholic. And also, it was just kind of fun to go to those kind of places completely sober. It was actually kind of cool, but it was brutal to be around that many people legitimately off their faces. But yeah, it's not around anymore. What what people what are saying here? Um, I'll answer that. I'll answer myself, no. They probably see set times almost over them. But has never said anything funny either. Okay, fair enough. And I think the way that he is handling and managing that is actually very impressive. I've said this before, but Bert really does have this very clever way of making everybody else's success about himself. Mm. It's very subtle the way that he does it. Whenever a co-host or a guest brings up someone who's doing well or they're on their way up, he doesn't directly insert himself into their success, but instead he associates himself with their rise simply by being there either before it happened, like in the case of Shane Gillis, or as it was taking off in the case of Matt Reif. He doesn't directly say, yeah, he blew up because he was on my podcast. No, 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 no. He implies that somehow by associating with Bert Kreischer, that helped Matt Rife to blow up. It's a very subtle art that Burt plays, and i got to give it to him. It's actually really effective. Transparent, yes, but effective, no less. So then after this masterful act of deception, Burt then outright shows his stupidity by comparing Matt Rife with, you guessed it, or maybe you didn't, Dave Chappelle. What? There should be a documentary film crew following him right now, because yeah. this trajectory... It's unlike anything we've ever seen in our business. Yeah, it's, it's, and the uh, only person it's close to, probably, yeah. and not even close to, but like similar to, yeah. is Chappelle. With his trajectory and stuff? Chappelle was 
Chappelle was at a younger age, probably 17, was given the keys to the kingdom. And and Chappelle, and I, and I think Chappelle would admit it, that he had some emotional bumps along the way, like losing friends, yeah. losing managers, losing agents, like going to Africa. Like yeah. Chappelle paid the tax through mental health with it and is on the other side of it, but with so much wisdom. Yeah. You look at a guy like Matt and you're like, uh, I don't know. I I mean this sincerely. And I, I, I'm really glad it didn't happen to me. Yeah. Like I, I couldn't. Oh, I, I would have. I, I, I would have. It up. I was not. I would not have been prepared for that. I I'm so lucky. I told Adam Divine one. <laughs> Such a weird humble brag. <laughs> These guys are so full of shit, in it. These guys are so full of shit. Time. I wish I could gift you, just in in like in like a pill where you could take it and feel it. What it's like to work for twenty years and then get success. I would never. You'd never want someone to have to do that. Yeah. Because it's twenty years of going. What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Am I doing the right thing? Everyone starts blowing up around you. Yeah. But to get out on the other side of it, it gives you- I feel like I've heard this story a million times before, man. Don't they get bored of these same old fucking rags to riches, stand-up comedy fucking stories? Like, fucking hell, bro. A lot of your success is dependent also on just pure luck. Some of it has to do with being associated with one of the biggest podcasts in the world in fucking Joe Rogan and counting him as a fucking friend. Some of it is timing. Who fucking cares? Like, just make it funny, man. Like, God damn it, bro. Such amazing perspective. Mm -hmm. And you feel so full of gratitude so many times that, like, you're like, you're just like, and you, you, you knew me that entire time. So I don't need to say this to you. But then you go. I mean, everyone wants what happened to Matt. Everyone, everyone wants, wants it. Yeah. Oh, man. I think that comparison with Dave Chappelle. <laughs> Yo, I hope Matt is like either religious or has somebody that's practiced the fucking, the dark arts or something because he must have so many people in the industry literally praying for his downfall, isn't it? Or just giving him the evils behind the scenes he probably should be i don't know you know having an all-seeing eye around his neck as a necklace or something because these motherfuckers are some bitchy jealous cunts in it in that scene like oh hell is so outrageous that i can barely deal with it I get what he's trying to say. He's not talking about Dave Chappelle's comedy style or even his latest success or anything like that. But to somehow try to compare Dave Chappelle's success on HBO as a teenager and then move on to late night shows with Matt Reif's TikTok fame. Exactly. Seriously, Matt Reif is just blowing up mm -hmm. this year and he's almost 30 years old. I don't know, guys, that really rubs me up the wrong way. I don't mean to sit here and write love letters to Chappelle, but what he did to expose Hollywood greed and corruption has almost never been done exactly. by another celebrity exactly. before, or exactly. at least not in that way, and at least not that successfully. You could even tell that Tom was like, are you sure about this one, Bert? And then went along with it anyway. And for Bert to say Chappelle was given the keys at an early age, fine, but what keys has Matt Reif been given? Most people still have no idea who he is. He's your girlfriend's favorite comedian, remember? Anyway, I could rip into these guys for hours, but I'll leave it there. I hope you enjoyed this. Big up podcast, Cringe. Absolute G. Absolutely enjoyed that. Give him a fucking watch if you haven't already. Going to like this, of course, because he's a fucking G. Let's see. Are you going to fucking load for me or not? You going to load? There you go. It's loading. Bish bash bosh. Come on. Come on, you fucking dickhead. There you go. Cool. You'll be out us in case you appreciate it, brother. Big up, Az. Thanks for all your streams lately. Giving us all lots to listen to. You know the vibes. Big up, us in case you appreciate you, brother. Thank you for the donation, my friend. You know how it is. Um, but yes, it, it is a team effort here. Without you guys listening and watching me, you know, um, there's no need for me to be here. So thank you for tuning in. And always giving this fucking immigrant, this immigrant lonely black guy. <laughs> Thank you for giving me a chance. <laughs> uh, we don't have.
have Thanksgiving in Africa, but I thank you guys. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, we were kings. We were kings. <laughs> It's so like <laughs> they stole it from us, Uche. They stole it from us, man. They stole it from us, Uche. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Yo, NJ Ranger, you're going to hell, man. NJ Ranger, you're going to hell. One like equals one small boat. <laughs> You're going to hell. You're going to hell. <laughs> Holy shit. Way in the water. Way in the water. Oh my god, this is dark, man. Come on, man. It's between Thanksgiving, man. What's this dark stuff, man? Come on, man. <laughs>